what is it? It's brown. What is it? It's like brownie flavored with like caramel. It's like for real? Caramel. Yeah, it does sound good. It's caramel brownie flavored. It's so good. You might give it a shot. I might give it a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. The name's like, the they got some left. It's the special one. I'll bring some next game. They gotta do something though with that name. <laughs> it's venture. <force? laughs> Maybe it's like a test thing. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. It was that last year. It's like it's new last year. It's pretty good. Yeah. Real quick, uh, quick opening statement is that this is what seniors are supposed to be when their career is coming down to an end. Two guys that won't refuse to lose, and that's what they did. I, I mean, the, the rebounds that they got were higher in the air than I've ever seen this guy, and this guy just battled some big boys. It came up with huge offensive rebounds, huge plays, um, and that's why we won because of these two guys. And, and, you know, everybody else had their role in it. But if it wasn't for these two guys, I, we, we, I'd be sitting here pretty sad. So questions for them. Uh, Keaton, is it that simple, man? Was that tonight? Was that just a refuse to lose game? Yes, sir. We uh, know what's all at stake. And um, we just came out at, at a battle. Uh, Jalen, about Keaton, and I asked you this in the post game on the television. Uh, Keaton probably doesn't get the talk that he deserves, uh, you know, the, the accolades or whatever. Every single night, though, this guy just shows up and goes to work. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's a senior. He brings it every night, and, you know, that's what we expect of him. Uh, like you said, he doesn't get the credit or the accolades that he deserves. But, um, you know, I don't think he cares about that. All, all he cares about is winning. Um, so, you know, we need guys like that on our team who don't care about the stats, getting theirs, getting all this publicity. We need guys who want to win. And he's a key example of that. Uh, Keaton, you guys dominated the rebounding battle, and uh, I, I would think coming into this game, not a lot of people would have given you much of a shot to do that, but you guys dominated on the glass. Why, why did it work? Why did you guys rebound so well here tonight? Uh, we just knew that they're a big physical team. We knew they were going to be aggressive on the glass, so we uh, made it a focal point just to battle them, and we came out on top. Jalen, with about uh, 50 seconds left in the game, uh, you know, can't be talked about you guys jumping up higher for rebound 50 seconds left in the game you came out of nowhere in the paint grabbed that one can you just talk about that moment and what fuels you in that um i seen the guys i seen our teammates boxing out and i know that they didn't really have a chance to get the ball because they were battling down there and you know i just was kind of just tracking the ball and you know i just was like i'm gonna get this rebound so you know i kind of just jumped as high as i could i guess and grabbed it uh, Keaton, you know, with, with your college career winding down as well, like, what are you saying to these guys in the locker room? Like, I, I felt like the team came out with a lot of energy and kind of played with, with that energy, you know, even in tough stretches. What are you saying to these guys as, you know, a senior who's you're in the end there? Well, it's been a lot of up and downs this season. Um, it hasn't gone that the way we wanted it to, but with the season coming towards the end, we have everything to play for. So it's just continuing to stay together, continuing to battle and not losing faith in each other. Any other questions from this group? Thank you, too. Thank you. Coach, you swept Wright State in the regular season for the first time since the 2015-16 campaign. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on today's win. Well, they've, they've been a menace to us, and uh, they've usually out physical us, and, and they play tougher than we do, and, and that was the focus. One of our off-season focuses this year, one of our goals was to sweep Wright State. That was one of our goals. And and saying that is the biggest compliment that I can give Wright State and Coach Nagy and, and their program. Because as you just said, we've won, we've won a lot of games. We've won a championship in that time and still haven't swept them. And, uh, you know, so to do it, uh, I'm very pleased. And, and we did it. Half on the defensive end and half because they had a bad night shooting. You know, they, they had a bad night shooting. We've had, like I told my team in the locker room, we've had those nights where, you know, Trey would miss a layup like Noel. And Noel had uh, 24 and, and 10 and missed three point blank shots, you know. And, and, and But you're going to have nights like that. Their opponents are going to have nights like that. And you got to find a way to win. And we did. And, and we accomplished the goal that we had at the beginning of the year. And that was, that was to sweep them. So uh, we have a, we have another goal was the same with Northern Kentucky, you know that, that we've struggled with them lately, and we won't, you know we talked about those two teams, and it all started last year after the season ended in our postseason meetings when 
you know, the, everybody's talking about, well, we always beat Detroit. That's the most important thing, Detroit, Detroit. What, but we're letting Wright State kick our ass. And uh, so we, we met as captains, and we said that this was going to be a goal. And we've got a chance to make another goal on Saturday. Camp in the postgame, I brought up the rebounding stats, too. You seem, like, genuinely shocked. Genuinely shocked. I, I don't pay attention to stats during the game. My staff does. Like, I might be one of the few coaches in the country that give you the stats at every media timeout. I've never in my career looked at them. I don't want to know. I want to go by gut. You know, now I may say to Smitty, um, how many threes has Brandon Rush made or something like that? And, he, and he'll look at me or he'll say things like, you know, he'll yell things at me trying to influence what we're doing offensively. Like two or three times today, he said, we're five for seven from at the two and oh for the world from the three. And we've got to force it into Trey. We've got run something, that, you know, and, and that's what I, why the, he's, a, you know, my staff's good is because I have that type of, communication from coaches they feel they can say what they want to say to me and i take it and i'll do i'll either do it or i won't i mean i got a million years doing this and i, I like to go by feel and so i they got a bunch of offensive rebounds early um and they got a few late that were tipped out of bounds but other than that i think we did a hell of a job yeah this number show uh what about the question that i asked jalen about keaton herbie you know where keaton doesn't seem to get the accolades and then those types of things but he is He's one of those guys, man. Whenever Oakland gets a win, it seems as though he's played well. Yeah, and, and you know, when you have a guy that's a one-year player that, um, you know, is coming into a team that's got, you know, a superstar in uh, your point guard and, and an emerging superstar in Trey Townsend, you can fall behind all that. And But everybody in our locker room knows, I know, Keaton knows his value. We all in the inner circle know how important he is to us. And that's why he played 35 minutes, you know, and he's field goal percentage. He's one of our top three point shooters. He's one of our top field goal percent shooters. He's one of our top rebounders. He's just, he's just, you want to use that word glue guy. There's, there's a perfect example of it. And if we didn't have Jalen Moore, he, they'd be talking about him a lot more, but you know, Jalen's doing what a senior's supposed to do. And we've had some great seniors come through here and you see him do it. And that's, I mean, he, he's been, on a tear offensively, he's finally shooting the three in rhythm instead of not shooting it unless there's no time on the shot clock. And look at his numbers. You know, I mean, we had eight points forever, and two of them were his two threes. And you usually don't see him start a game 3-3. Three, three. It's usually late. And it gave him confidence. And that 18 free throws, we did what we do. You know, we did our zone did what it does. It, it held a team to 23% from the three and only 10 free throws. And I don't think – in the second half, I can't remember them shooting a free throw. What was it, one or two? Two for four. Um, so, you know, that zone did what it does. It, it, it hasn't done it in the last four or five games. We've been really bad in the last four or five games. But tonight we were good again, and, and we need to be again Saturday. What's it going to be like for you on Saturday as Jalen Moore plays his last regular season game? Because, you know, you with the point guards and – yeah. You got, he came here and you tossed him the keys and uh, he, he delivered. There's no doubt about that. You know, senior day is always a tough one for me. Um, you get really emotional and it's worse now because so many guys aren't here. You know, so many guys don't make it through. And back in the day, you know, you, you lived and died with those guys. You went through good and bad with them. And now they leave, you know. Now, if the bad happens, they leave, or even if good happens, they leave. And and the world's changed. People are going to get asked to leave. You know, I mean, it's just every program in the country is going to do it. And uh, we got to stay up with the times. I and mean, we, you know, recruiting is 100% different than it was two years ago. And we got to figure it out. And, um, you know, I've gotten into talking about JMO into recruiting, which is typical of me. But, um, you know, we've got to. It's a new wave of recruiting and a new way of doing things, and and uh, we got to figure it out and do it. And we're gonna we're gonna say goodbye to a, an Oakland great. But you know, if we win Saturday, it'll be his last game ever in the arena. Uh, Detroit did lose, right? Yeah. Yes. So it'll be his last game in the arena, no matter what happens Saturday, unless we lose, and then we'll get one more because I think we'll drop to uh, sixth or seventh. I think six the worst. Rob, Rob Morris is up three at halftime right now. So if they win, the worst we can be is sixth. Uh, 
Detroit lost, Wright State lost. So yeah, the worst we can be is six. So we're either going to be on the road with a bye as the fifth seed, or if we lose, we'll be the sixth seed and we'll either play IPUI or Green Bay here, and then we'll go to whoever the third seed is. Um, so uh, we need to win. We need to win. It'll be Jalen's last game. And our senior day is one of the greatest moments. That I, you know, we do it as good as anybody. And, you know, going up into the crowd and thanking them and, you know, senior day over the years, sweater vest day and all that kind of stuff is and, and our kids stay on the floor until the last person leaves. Um, there'll be no, there'll be no, you guys should want to say it's good because there's no media afterwards. If you want to talk to me, come on the floor and talk to me. But our, our mission is to thank our fans and to be on the floor until the last fan leaves, take as many pictures uh, as you will. And, and I think there's going to be a lot of tears. I, uh, I'm sure Jalen, knowing the emotional kid he is, his speech will be something else. And, uh, as much as I love those speeches, I hate them too because I know what they mean. You know, you think back to Jamal last year, how the people treated him. The, the one of the classic all time ones was Sharon Dorsey Walker. I, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget the our bench sprinting on the floor after his speech. And he was the only senior jump. We won a championship that year too, but they jumped on top of him like, man, we're going to miss you. So long answer to your question, but it'll be a, it'll be a, It'll be one of those great shitty days, you know. Uh, you and Coach Nagy have known each other a long time, coach against each other all the way back to the summit days. Yeah. Um, how much of a game like this comes down to the chess match that the two of you kind of play, knowing each other and what the other one might do? For me to answer that, Matt, would be to take away from all the great things that our players do. You know, Do we know what they're going to do? Yeah. Do they know what we're going to do? Yeah. I mean, they we call a play and they're calling it out from the bench, you know, ISO bouncing, and we put a couple new ones in today and then I never used them because, you know, we just, we are going to go with the lady that we brought and sure enough, they, they knew things and Trey just made great plays down the stretch and Jalen made some big keys, key shots. And I'll tell you a guy that you got to give some credit to is Osei Price. You know, Blake is just really struggling. Um, if you, had a torn meniscus in your knee, you'd probably struggle too. But he's given us everything he's got, but it became very evident with about 10 minutes to go that, you know, as much as I love the kid and want him out there because he means so much to us, uh, they stopped guarding him. And once they stopped guarding him, I had to get him out. And, uh, you know, hopefully he'll bounce back Saturday because he only played 27 minutes today. And, and get some confidence and believe, but you know, it was, it was Osei Price stepped on and, and uh, he ended up playing 21 minutes and you know, his numbers other than the six rebounds, you wouldn't say much about, but he was a real steady and influence and really picked us up, made a huge three. The three he made really brought some life into the arena, which was really dead at the time. And, you know, we'd missed a million shots in a row. And so, um, uh, Again, I got off track of your question, but we know what they're doing and they know what we're doing. I, I think uh, it, it, I don't know. I think, I think Scott's a hell of a coach. Uh, I've said it a million times and I, I value his friendship and, you know, we'll, we'll have a lot more battles probably. For Rocket Watts returning in this game, he didn't play against Detroit and then Antoine Davis scored 30. But in this game, he played, and then uh, Trey Calvin scored six. How big think, is Rocket yeah. on defense? You think? <laughs> huh? You think that's hurt us? Go to the Milwaukee game. That's the game that put us in the situation we're in. You know, we got we got a chance to we're killing Milwaukee, but we got six guys. And if we, if we had Rocket, you know, the, they went on a six zero run. I'm not sure they would have done that. Maybe they would have, but. We're sure a hell of a lot better defensively when he's out there. And if you look at the numbers, they'll speak to that. Um, and I played him about the right minutes today. He wants to play 40 minutes, but he, he's he's a 25 to 30 minute player because he does play hard, especially defensively, and he gets tired and then he makes some mental mistakes. The 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 first half, his only basket of the game, where he ripped the ball in the corner and went to the rim. If we could get him to do that on a consistent basis, 
sky's the limit for them because you know Ben Arley didn't guard that physical body. But, you know, he wants to fight me a little bit on that. And, and uh, the numbers show that that's what he's got to do. And hopefully this offseason I can convince him so that next year when he comes back, he, you know, he's a guy doing what Jalen Moore's doing, getting to the free throw line 18 times. And it, how many times has Jalen shot double-digit free throws in the last month? Because he's, he's not going to be denied. He's getting to the rim. And Rock can do the same thing. No, absolutely. Okay. I think that's it. Thanks, Coach. All right.